Hi, I'm uh, Josh Dickerson, and I got uh, third place at the Newcastle WCQ today playing Brave yeah, ABC Ferry Hands. Awesome. And uh, what was your record? Uh, went X1 and came 3rd place, so it's pretty cool. Cool. And before you get into the deck profile, tell me about this deck box. Oh, honestly, I saw it. I go for the trade group uh, through Salted Accessories. And I've got um, I've got an Obelisk uh, playmat too, and he's like my favourite god card, so of course you had to get it, man. You got a rep. <laughs> Can you open up? Yeah, of course. It's so nice. Really good value too. And there's a little dice tray here too. It's just like perfect. So affordable too. <laughs> Alright, yeah, you can get to the profile now. Yeah, no worries. Well, let's start with the monsters, okay? Sure. Hang on a minute, why not just take some of them? Playing... Can you flip the other way? Yeah, sure, sure. Playing 2A. 3B. Uh, and then 2C. You're playing, um, you play the 3B just because B searches all the other pieces, so it's like the best one to start with. And having too many pieces like leads to bricking. You don't want a handful of like C's and A's and B's. So you just like that's the reason for the free tune the two, basically. Um, play the one Moon Driver too, of course. Um, this is a brick, but like if you open it, um, you can't do the combo so for Union Hanger. Um, so it just becomes a brick. That's why the reason you play one. But the card's insane too. Obviously, it allows you to quip a. Um, Union monster from deck and it bypasses the restrictions of that union hanger and unauthorized have in where you can just special summon the monster, it's insane. But of course that one. And then on to the Ferians. We're only playing the two regulars. Um, I've seen a lot of people play free, but the issue is this is only good when you've got your pieces in the grave. On its own, it doesn't do anything. So that's the reason for playing the two. And obviously I'm, I'm playing free field spells, so the two felt great, definitely. Don't need any more than that. Save 60 pound too. <laughs> Um, that's, that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, then we got the uh, brave stuff here, with the water enchantresses, and the Griffin Rider. I'm not reading the explanation. This card's insane. Like you, sometimes you um, a brick in this deck classes as like regulus plus Griffin, and then you still got cards in hand. Like it's just so good. It's two negates before you even get to like your combo. So you're protecting your union hanger. You're protecting through nib. You're protecting through a lot of so many things. It's insane. And I've only played, my only hand traps that I played were Ash Blossom. Um, we're at 42 cards and there's not enough, like, there wasn't enough room to play loads of hand traps. But the reason for playing just Ash is because of Branded being in the format. You want to Ash the Branded Fusion, get so much value off that. And then Ash is just insane as well, like Ash and Desires, Ash and like, I mean every deck ha like struggles, not struggles, but every deck like Ash is good against. It's the reason you only play the Ash. Uh, free Union Hanger. <laughs> There's no need to explain this card. It's insane. Like, it's just insane. Like, everyone knows what Union Hanger is, anyways. And then the more field spells. There's the free Coliseum. This card's so good. Um, you, before this came out, you used to end in the Union Hanger, so when you tagged out the Buster, you could, like, float even more. But with this, now you leave it up, because a lot of people don't read the second effect, and where you go to the battle phase and you attack over a monster, uh, you can protect one monster by sending either a, a Ferian monster from your uh, deck to grave or a Ferian card. So a lot of times you send like dead copies of this because you can send like the Ferian. Uh, it's really good to do so. And then, one Mystic Mine. We're playing Separation Terraforming. So the thing with Mystic Mine is, if you're playing a field spell deck and you're already maxing out on Terraform and Separation, it seems like a bit daft not to play this card because you can just search it when you need it and it's insane. There is two more in the side to complement it, but we'll get onto that a bit later on, of course. The card should be banned, by the way, but you <laughs> don't need me to tell you that. Uh, the terraforming, the set rotation, and then, yeah, that's it. Basically, no explanations. Card's insane. It's really good to set it to. Um, my only loss earlier was because I had this set against Despia. He went the branded, um, the field spell. I forgot to chain set rotation. So it's just a silly mistake, I know. But it has utility other than just searching a field spell. You can stop your opponent's Mystic Mine. You can stop your opponent's like, anything with it. It's really strong. Uh, free unauthorized reactivation. Um, this is essentially just Union Hanger. It's all it does. So a lot of people think the deck dies by like, lives and dies by Union Hanger. Like, of course, Union Hanger like is a choke point um, if you don't have it. But this is essentially a fourth, fifth, and sixth copy of it because you, when you've normal summon or special summon, you can target any machine monster. You can equip your um, machine from deck to it. So you're equipping your Union Driver, and then you're still doing the combo as if you had Union Driver face up. It's so good. Any more copies of Union Hangers like? What more do you want? 
Um, more spells, right around me to complement the Brave package I talked yeah, about earlier. Uh, Faithfuls. Draco back. For the one-off spells as well. Got the call by and the foolish burial. Doesn't need any explanation. This is insane. Some, um, obviously, not just sending the enchantress as well. I got token collectors on the side, so you send token collectors. Sometimes you've only got regulus in hand and you haven't got any pieces. You can just send a piece, uh, usually B, of course, and you're like, uh, regulus equip it, and yeah, it's such a good card. Uh, to complement the um, lack of hand traps, I play Forbidden Droplet. Um, my reason was because. I was really scared of like Scythe, it's still in the format, I don't know why it's in the format, but it still is. And then you got like the Fairy Index putting out really big boards, and even against Sword Soul it's insane. But the part that comes up the most is in scenarios where your opponent has veiled your Platinum Gadget, because that is the correct time to veil the deck. Um, your opponent's got one monster in the field, you're able to send uh, your third piece that you need in the grave to summon the Buster with Droplet. So it's not just like in the negation part aspect of it, it's also getting your pieces in the grave and your engine rolling. Uh, and that's like... It's really good for that as well as the negations, of course. Quick question. Did you ever make the play where you set B and then drop it away to B? No, I didn't. Um, but I've done the play where you tagged out a Buster, had droplets, and then used the droplets sending B. But I never actually set it, though, because I never, like... I think I opened really well today. And obviously you've got to have a bit of luck in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think that's kind of helped me a little bit today as well. And then lastly, we got the Prot of Prosperities. Um, you have to play this. I am playing three engines. Uh, you can't see free engines in five like in five open hands. Like you've got to dig for your deck. This, you're always banishing for six. Uh, never banish for free unless you're in a really weird grind game. That never happens. You just need this so badly. Um, without it, you're not getting your side deck pieces. You're not getting your hanger. You're not getting even like Mystic Minds and stuff. It's you have to play it. Uh, onto the um, side deck. Uh, one red reboot. Um, <laughs> this card should be banned or it free. It's a call by argument all over again. The card's stupid. Uh, you're just playing it against um, anti spell. This deck hard loses to anti spell, not D barrier, because it's yeah. You only have one fusion on, so it's a link deck. Uh, this is mainly for the anti spell and for the back row decks, of course. The two copies of Mystic Mine uh, to complement the, uh, the third one in the main deck. Um, I happened to be today where I was playing against a brave um, fairy deck in round five, I think it might be round four, and he went like. That deck knows a lot, so he had 24 cards left in deck, and I activated the mine, but I wasn't going to sit on it to deck him out. I was trying to sit on it to draw the correct cards that out his board, but then, in my opinion, that deck is like way more explosive. So it took 14 turns to draw the correct hand that would have like broken his board, but by that point, he's drew 14 times too, so I just decked him out. It felt scummy, I hate it, but it's. Yeah, I decked him out. I had to. <laughs> I don't know. I hate it. But yeah, it comes up. You don't usually want to sit and miss it, man, because it's so. Especially after the YTS in America the week, everyone knows people on this. So everyone side decked in the outs to it. This was in the last round where I got drawn lock birded and he had one monster on the field. I was able to miss it, mine him by myself one turn. That's all I needed because draw kills this deck. And then I was able to pop off then. So it's why you have to play Mr. Command 2. Uh, speaking of draws, we played three of them as the uh, other hand traps. Sorry, it's insane. It's really good against the Ferian deck. Um, I'm still respecting Full Enderies because I've been doing so well recently. And other than Droplets, there's not much out to their board. But we all know that they can't play through that. And then good against Brave decks too. If they're going Enchantress, you're using this. Then they're only playing with the Braves of that turn. They're not using their other engines and stuff. So yeah, draws really good right now. I'm a big fan of it. Um, Triple token collector for Sword Soul. In my opinion, other than other than Cyber Dragon, but no one's playing Cyber Dragon. I say that I play against Cyber Dragon round one. So, other than Cyber Dragon, Sword Soul is this hard uh, deck's hardest matchup. So I really wanted to prepare for that deck. Um, I know it's such a diverse format. I might not get to play against that deck, but I wanted to prepare for it because if I second I play against that deck, I feel like I lose because the shoot is such a good card against the deck. Uh, and this paired with like a red reboot or something else it kills them. They can't really play through it. They have to open like what the Adhara and the Longian and stuff to play through it. So it's a really good card. Um, onto the Twin Twisters. Pop Mystic Mine, pop Back Rose. It's a chainable. Uh, the reason we're not playing Lightning Storm in the evening at the moment is because people are playing like Anti Spell. You need a chainable card to pop the Anti Spell. And uh, that's why he's playing the Twin Twisters over something like a Lightning Storm. Really if Anti-Spell wasn't in the format, Storms would come back in. Uh, 
I'll also get your pieces in the grave too, which is, you know. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, D-Barrier. When I was making this side deck, it became very apparent to me that I had no cards siding over first. So I was thinking what cards can be good. Uh, Anti-Spell hurts me. Um, Solemns are not very good in this deck. So the D-Barrier is cracked. Call Fusion, Call and Synchro, there's not much your opponent can do. There's only out to it in the game right now is the red reboot, it's at one, so it's tough not to play it. Uh, onto the extra. deck. Oh, thank you. I got my Fibe. They're OCG sleeves, I believe. Uh, really nice, though. Sacred Beasts. Uh, triple ABC Dragon Buster. When I f oh, my God. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, triple Buster. So you're playing three, even though, as you saw earlier, I'm only playing two of the pieces. That's a Prosperity Banish. It's an easy Prosperity Banish. So that's the reason for playing three. And, of course, when you're tagging out constantly, you can still make the third, but it's always one of the targets for Prosperity. Um, but it's the boss monster of the deck. Then we we'll, um, play the Appaloosa. This is for the IP. When, because uh, the end board of this deck is Platinum Gadget with the IP, uh, with the Brave stuff, and then in, in the Buster. So in your opponent's turn, you're tagging out with the Buster, you're using the IP, and you're uh, more than likely, you're going into this card, to, it's like a four material or three material most of the time. So your opponent's having to play through banishes, negates, and then that loser at the end of it. Another card you can summon off of the IP. I'll get the IP out the way as well, just to show it. But, uh, another card that I was preparing uh, played today was because <sighs> at Ignisus has been doing quite well um, as, as a rogue deck. So to respect that, I played this. It's the only out to the um, the Link 6, the Arrival Cybers, because you can't attack over it or anything. Because there's nothing higher than 4k in this deck. Uh, I didn't play against it, I never summoned it once today, but going forward, it's something that you should always have in your X deck if you can play it. Because the X deck in this is not really, it's not tight, which is great. So yeah, it's definitely uh, just for the Agnistas. Then we've got the uh, access code for the other high link buzz. Actually, need no explanation. It's the way to OTK. Some of this plus Buster, it's 8 free damage, so you know. Access code. <laughs> literally, literally. There's like some cards you just can't explain. Everyone just knows access code is access code at the end of the day. Uh, played some Nightmares. We played um, Phoenix, Cerberus, and the Unicorn. Like I said, the X deck's not tight at all, so you can play the Cerberus too. It comes up, it's really cool. Um, using discard effects to get your pieces in the grave, brilliant. Um, so against certain decks as well, where the app loser isn't good, you obviously get IP tagging out into Nightmare Unicorn sometimes. It's really good. It came up once today in that scenario. Um, and your link climbing as well to get your pieces in the grave. I'll follow the access code talker. They're very cool cards. Then the link spider. This is just for the right of our Amicia time. People sometimes are going to ash your faithful so you don't have the griffin and then you've got a token on the field. Uh, you need to tag, you need to um, link off of it into this to make the access codes and stuff. Otherwise, you're just making like IP, I guess, or the Phoenix, but that's the reason you have this. Uh, it's just for the token. Uh, the Platinum Gadget. This card is now really, really popular. Like, it's really crucial to the deck now. And this is where I've been saying before when people have been like Valor and Impermin. This is the correct one to hit. Because you're going like, in the combo, you're going to have your A and B in the grave. And then you still are, you're going to have two pieces in the grave, basically. And this is the one that gets your third piece in the grave. So if you're Valoring this, it's really hard to get a third piece in the grave unless I've got a, a Fateful or I've got the Regulus with the C. That's the only way to get your third piece in the grave. You don't actually play any gadgets, which I was contemplating playing one because it has a floating effect. If it's destroyed, it summons a gadget, but if you're playing the Brave stuff, the gadgets have normal sun effect. It conflicts too much. But it was, it was an idea that I, that I was contemplated. Uh, the last Link Monster, Liner, is a light deck. That's it, it's a light deck. <laughs> you're targeting people's she shards, you're targeting people's um, whatever light targets they have. It's insane. Obviously, it floats into pieces too. You can search B and A with it because they've got um, 1500 less defense, which is really, really cool. And then lastly, you got the Biguska. This card is insane against Despia. Some the because they chain block so so much. The Appaloosa isn't the best to go for. So summoning this, they really struggle to play through it. Um, early running like round six against a good friend of mine. I summon this. Uh, had one piece in grave, two piece in this. It comes to my turn. You switch it to attack. You link off into access code. You, you bust it in the grave. That's game. It buys so many games. And it helped me help me win against Cyber Dragons. I get. I'm like a Cyber Dragons playing this deck. Because um, the contact he's done this, so yeah. The card's insane. And last one was Tornado Dragon. I never summoned it once. 
Uh, yesterday, I was playing at a different regional. I was playing barricade ball blocker, and it never came up. I never summoned it. Like I said, this extra deck isn't tight, so you got a lot of flex spot. So I'd consider this a flex spot. Um, but my thinking was was going through like anti spells and stuff. In certain scenarios, you can have your regular equip C and then link those two off and get like pieces engraved um, via platinum gadget and stuff and, and pieces in the field. So this can also like it pops the anti spell. That was my reason for. I never summoned it. It's going against back row decks too, in where the uh, upper loser might be terrible. I never play against any L Lich, but if I was going to, I'd attempt to end on the IP with this. Um, it's just a good card. Oh, yeah, and that's it. Thank you for the profile. Really appreciate your in-depth explanations. Or any shout-outs? Yeah, I got a shout-out to uh, Critical Hit in Liverpool um, and all the boys that go there. Beanie Games in Stockton and all the lads that go there. They're all behind you right now. Uh, this is the first time where I think four of us topped in Top Cut, and that's so nice to have like a friendship group doing so well at uh, everything. And then just shout-outs to like um, my podcast as well. I do a Face Down Wide Joe podcast. Um, we've been inactive since like December, but I'm starting to get things back on the road now and expect a few episodes in the future. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on YouTube, follow me on Spotify. I'm going to be on there as well, right? And we're going to have, of course, get JY on. And we're going to have like so many more people on. We've already three episodes. We've already had like um, some really good people on. So go check it out. Thank you. All right, thanks again. Take care.